Holy and merciful Father, please cleanse me and bless the study with tremendous power and accuracy. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, I pray. Amen. Hi, everybody. This is Angelo Quinones, and you reach I Am Ministries. I Am Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's Holy and Inspired Word, the Bible. And so um, we're looking at the full Greek construction of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 in particular. But we're off that for a while. We're taking a little vacation from that, from the full Greek construction of that, even the full Hebrew construction of John 1, 1. Bereshit hayah hadabar, vahadabar hayahim, ha'elohim, wa'elohim. And we're looking at end quote, and we're looking at other verses of scriptures that have to do with us dealing with the those, okay, the JWs, the Jehovah's so-called witnesses. Because we need to know how to deal with the witnesses. Okay? So uh, we're looking at the full Greek construction of every single verse that comes into discussion, that comes into the pool of debate and campaigns between us born again children of God, Trinitarians, by the way. And the those. Okay? Now, we're at the word Trinity portion of the, um, of the, of the series. And, but this has to do with Hebrew, but also we're going to look at um, some constructions in the Greek Septuagint. Because we, we also look at the Hebrew and Greek construction of things. Not only just the Greek, uh, the full Greek construction. That sounds like heaven itself. Okay? <laughs> Now this is the deal. Now let's look at, look at the NIV. Okay, I usually look at the NASB, but you know I'm just trying to prove that the, the Trinity is also an NIV. Kissing cousins of the King James, you know, it's just a deal. It says over here, in the beginning, God created the heavens, okay, and the earth. Okay. And that's just a deal. Now, I can go on and say over here, now uh, the earth, Eretz in Hebrew, was formless and empty. Darkness was over the panim, okay, the surface or the face of the deep. And the Spirit, capital S, very respectful, and the Spirit, meaning the third person of the Trinity, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters verse 3 and god said let there let there be light and there was light okay now you may ask me where's the trinity well first of all it doesn't say three right away okay and if it did People, was, you know, who, who don't believe in the Trinity, Islam, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormon Church, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, Iglesia de Cristo. I mean, I could go on and on and on, quoting from uh, different cults and sects, um, because they don't believe in the, in, in the Trinity. They don't believe in the deity of Christ, okay? Even though the Quran says, we did this and we did that, so they, they play lip they pay lip service to they don't believe in the Trinity, but they actually do. The demons also believe and tremble. They believe they just don't trust in God. They believe in God. They believe this is a God. But they don't trust in God for their eternal salvation because they have no salvation. It says over here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God. Now let's check out the Hebrew. Let's check this out. And this is just a recap because I want to go to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. But I want to look at the Hebrew according to this and according to that. So let's look at it. Okay. Um, let's go to the Hebrew side of things. <clears throat> As I, I lose my voice. That's just, just the King James only curse. I mean, it's just, you know. All right. So good thing about verse 1s and chapter 1s, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you just go right there. And it says over here, Behreshit. Okay. Bara. And then Elohim. Now what is this? Well, Behreshit is, um, it means in beginning. Literally. There's no be ha reshit but that's definite the, uh, already anyway, in the beginning. Okay, so, um, be, let me see if I could poke the bear. Let me see if I could just, um, enlarge it a little bit by going into my 
settings and things like that um accessibility magnification and turn it on and then we go back to genesis okay you understand what i mean because i'm a diacritic guy okay that's just the deal let me put this on forever okay <laughs> that's just it and it says over here now did i really poke the bear a lot i mean it's not really okay the, the now it's very very big okay so i'm right under the word beginning okay and so you see the whole structure here okay of these two words the proposition and then the object of the proposition um over here now remember you read hebrew from right to left never from left to right like you read you know english spanish uh filipino uh, greek uh, latin French. I mean, all those languages post more. You read from left to right. You never read like that uh, according to Hebrew. Okay, only if you want to break up a syllable before you start reading. You look at a word, and if you're having trouble with it, you can you can you can you know sort of parse the syllable if you want to. You could do it like that. But reading it from right to left. So the the letter, the Hebrew consonant. Okay, and before I start, you have all. You know, for vowels, you don't have any vowel letters, okay? You have vowel dots, uh, dashes, and strokes. That's what you have for vowels, okay? Remember, the Masoretic text was worked on, okay, by the Masoretes around 600 A.D. to uh, the 6th century uh, A.D. to the 10th century uh, A.D., okay? So um, they took several hundred years to copy uh, the Hebrew text and preserve it the way they wanted to preserve it okay with dots dashes and strokes okay now um i'm right under the g in beginning and you have a b there bit it looks like a b a little bit doesn't it though i mean it just just doesn't have the line you know going uh toward the top you know um but it's, it's like an incomplete b just think of it like that bit Okay, now it can be also a V in Biblical Hebrew <clears throat> and Modern Hebrew, okay? Now, what makes it hard, this letter? Well, it has a hardening doggish, which is a dot, uh, okay, hardening, uh, hardening dagger or doggish in the belly, okay, or in the heart of the letter. There's a dot. You see that little dot in, inside the consonant there, this, this B consonant? <clears throat> That's making this bait uh, hard, okay? This is equal to the um, to the the um, beta, in or actually beta is equal to this, okay? Uh, in Greek, biblical Greek, and then the vita, which is the beta also, but they call it vita, is equal to this exactly. It could be a v and a v in modern Greek, okay? The vita, okay? So this is a b. In Hebrew so that's the preposition okay the Greek preposition is n okay and um, you have a um, schwa underneath this okay whenever there's a schwa underneath that the first the first uh, uh, consonant like this with a uh, preposition well it's like uh, just say uh, okay uh. Very hard to pronounce this, but it's basically eh. Uh, that's why it's just like an upside down e sort of, you know, the, the, like that. So, um, just pronounce it be. Be means in, okay, here. Be equal to the, uh, you know, the n preposition, like I said before, spelled out epsilon and nu uh, in Greek, is equal to this, okay, the English in preposition is equal to this be that's all it is now the preposition is attached okay it's not even a space after that okay it's attached right in front of the next coming word which means beginning okay now um there is no article ha here okay so it's just in beginning literally but since it's definite you have to translate it in the beginning now, what's the word for beginning? Well, the word for beginning is spelled out, okay, R-E, 
S H I T, basically. Okay, well, let's check out. This is a, a resh in Hebrew with the set a uh, uh, vowel underneath it. Then you have the aleph, which looks like an X. It's not an X, it's a nothing, basically. You know, it's, 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 think of it, it doesn't, doesn't make a, a sound. And then you have the SH uh, letter, which is called sheen or shin. I don't know why scholars call it sin to um, say that it's sin to call uh, uh, sheen shin. Okay, because Mr. Spock, uh, uh, and he was Leonard Nimoy in real life, <clears throat> he used to call this letter shin and not sheen. So there are Hebrews out there that call this letter shin and not sheen, and it's the other way around sometimes okay there's different pronunciations there's different was and rumors of was you know see that you'd be in trouble now underneath that the w looking letter okay in the first g in beginning is not a w it's an sh here because of the position of the sheen dot okay if the sheen dot is if the dot above this particular letter which is called sheen or shin okay is on the upper above it. It shouldn't touch it. So if you're you're doing this, if you're if you're writing it, please do not put it right on the top of the letter. You know, uh, it's very very confusing. Just put it, you know, like a just make a separation. And this has a separation. If the upper if if the dot on the, is on the upper right hand corner above the letter, that's an S. It's an S H. It's as simple as that. It looks like a W, yeah, but just throw that away. There's no W-looking letter in Hebrew that looks like a W. So just throw that out, okay? So um, there is a W in, in, in Hebrew, but that's the that's the wow, okay? Like in a tetragrammaton, but this is not it. So whenever you're looking at a, 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 a P-looking letter in Greek, it's not a P. If you're looking at a... At a at a um, uh, W looking letter in Hebrew is not a is not a W. If you're looking at an X looking letter in Greek, it's not an X. It's a it's a CH he. So I mean, there's a lot of different things. That, I mean, in, in Greek, if you're looking at a V looking letter, okay, is not a V. It's an N, like in the word N, like in the beginning, right? So just just get that out of your mind, okay? But anyway, um, I don't know if I mentioned the 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 resh though. I don't know if I let me let me go back though because this word is okay, reshit, reshit. So it begins with an R, okay. The word after the uh, be um, preposition, which means in. So reshit starts with an R. It's called resh, resh. Okay, and it looks like an R, but an opposite side looking R. So that's kind of easy. That's right under the uh, the I in beginning. Okay, the, the second I. Okay, so it looks like an R, doesn't it? But it's just somebody just put it the other way around, right? <laughs> okay, you understand? And uh, you have two dots underneath that. That's called sere. Okay, sere. Sere. And so that's that's a e class like in the word they. So that's that makes an a sound like in the word they. The e. This is an e class. Okay. So in biblical Greek you have the e and then you have the a e classes. Okay. This was this is the a, like in the word they. Like I said before. So you got re. And then you have uh, uh, the the x looking letter aleph, which is the first letter in the Hebrew alpha, um, alphabet, aleph bet, right? And so then, then we come uh, to the W looking letter, which is not a W, it's an SH because of the position of the upper dot. It's on the upper, is above the, the letter to the upper right hand corner. Okay. And then you have a little tiny I, a little tiny uh, I class underneath it is a dot. Make sure that the dot, okay, is is below the Mendoza line. I'm going to be mentioning Mendoza lines, okay? Um, the first Mendoza line is, the, you know, you have a notebook, okay? So you're writing on the line. That's the first Mendoza line. Mendoza line. That's the lower Mendoza line, if you will. The higher Mendoza line is the line above what you're, what you're writing, okay? It's like the ceiling. And there's a Hebrew letter that goes over that, okay? So that's the second Mendoza line, okay? The higher Mendoza line, if you will. 
the, the lower Mendoza line is just the line that you're writing on. Okay? You understand what I mean? Now, when you see a dot below the Mendoza line, the lower Mendoza line, okay, that's an I, that's a, that's an I class. It's just one dot. It's called Herek. Okay, so don't, don't make these uh, dots and dashes and strokes, you know, uh, too hard. Okay, there, you know, one dot, when you're looking at a dot below the letter, okay, you're probably looking at an I class. If you're looking at a dot above the letter, okay, you're probably looking at an O class. If you're looking at a T looking thingy below the letter, you're, you're looking at a, a A or O class, okay, mostly A. If you're looking at a, something that looks like a minus sign under a Hebrew consonant, well, you're looking at an A class, okay, like in the word hat. So these are just symbols for, for, for vowel sounds. And after that, you have a consonant called Yod. I'm right, after, I'm right below the E in beginning. Okay, it looks like, a, it looks like a, an apostrophe, right? A big fat apostrophe. But that's a, that's, a, um, that's a Yod. That's a Y in Hebrew. But this is playing the part of a vowel at this point. So um, the I class in the previous letter and that vowel... Um, yod, because it's acting like a, like a vowel, is blending together, making one sound. Okay, A e or E. Okay? Really, you know, say Elohim, so it's really E. Okay, and then you have um, a T in Hebrew, one of the T's. The other one is a Tet, this is Tau. You have two T's in Hebrew. And um, I'm right under the B in beginning. That's a Tau. Now, be careful with this letter. You're going to need to practice. It looks like two other letters. It looks like the chet, which is a ch, equal to the chi, or the other way around, whatever. And this letter looks also like the he, a little bit. Okay? The difference between this and those other letters is this has a horn, okay, on the bottom left foot sticking out. Okay? So this has a foot or a horn. Okay? And it has no, has no um, opening. Hunter, you there? It has no opening like uh, the hay, okay, which is found two times in the tetragrammaton. So, Behrashit, in the beginning. All right, now, um, and then we go to um, the word for created. In the Greek Septuagint, is epoiasin for created. It's a simple aorist tense form, okay, epoiasin. And um, the epsilon over there is a is an augment, okay? It's an augment, showing you the the aorist tense. <coughs> the aorist tense can be seen by an augment sometimes, um, uh, by an epsilon, okay? In uh, in uh, me verbs, as a matter of fact, okay. So getting back to Hebrew, this is bara, bara. Created, okay, and the lexical form is actually bara, okay. It's the same as the as the the form, okay, in the text, spelled out, and right under the D in created, okay. Spelled out. Let's put it. Uh, let's transliterate this. B A R A, and basically that's it, okay. Let me see. That's what that's what they did also. Okay. Bara. Spell out bait, and you have the hardening dog. You see the little tiny dot. I'm running under the D and created. There's a little tiny dot in that consonant, and that's a hardening dogish. Now this is a trick, though. Okay. You're gonna see some consonants that have the dot, and it'll harden that consonant. But there are other Okay, consonants that cannot be double. Uh, I'm sorry, that cannot be. Uh, let me just say it over again. You see, there are some consonants in Hebrew that can be hardened. Okay, hardening doggish. There's a little dot. Okay, like the B. Okay, the bit. But there are other letters that will have a dot in it. Okay. But it doesn't harden the letter, it doubles the letter. You see that in the Yod, you see that in the Mem, okay, um, you know, and you see that in the Noon. So you have to be careful with that. You have to see 
which ones can double. You can see it in the sheen. Okay, it could double a sheen. I think you're going to be seeing that in this in this verse. So you have to be you have to know which consonants can double. And if they double, they cannot be hardened all at the same time because then you can't tell. Okay, and then you have to know which ones can be which ones can uh, take the, the the hardening doggish. Okay, so, so some letters that can double, they can be doubled by the hardening doggish. Okay, reduplication is nothing new if you know you know Greek, because it happens in Greek also. You know, like in the word tetelestai, it has been finished. Or it has been paid, or it has been accomplished. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 30 of chapter, chapter 19 of the Gospel, Kata Ioannin, Gospel according to John. That's in the perfect tense. Okay. So, um, you know, reduplicating consonant connected by a connecting vowel. But the the thing with Hebrew, you don't see it reduplicating. It reduplicates, but you don't see it. Okay. Sometimes in Greek, you don't see the reduplication. Also, you don't see a you know, right in your face reduplication. You you get that in in, in me verbs, okay. Also, okay. Uh, sometimes, okay. A letter in the reduplicating um. I uh, reduplicate in a, in a me uh, when a me uh, verb reduplicates in Greek, okay. Uh, meaning on the, the like like the, let's say like the delta, okay. You see uh, another delta. Okay, and, and you know, and, and you see something like that. But sometimes there are letters that don't reduplicate exactly right up in your face. That they'll just take a, a, a hard, a, um, a rough breathing marker. Okay. But anyway, but but in, in Greek, Greek is uh, Hebrew. Greek is like Hebrew that you know they. And I don't know if they copied from the the Hebrews. This is not Hebrew. This is Aramaic script anyway. This Paleo Hebrew is Hebrew. Okay, Paleo Hebrew is Hebrew is what Moshe wrote. Moses. Okay. But but the two languages, okay, can double their letters. Okay. But Hebrew doesn't show you the reduplication. It doesn't show you that. It shows you it by a dot, and then you're gonna have to put it yourself. You're gonna have to pronounce it with the extra uh, sh sound, or with, with the extra m sound, or the new sound, or the y sound, or whatever the case may be. You know. Okay. So, the word for created is spelled out bait, with the hardening doggish. So this b, and then you have the t looking thingy. And I already told you that when you look at it, it's something that looks like a t to us, it's not a t underneath a letter that is an a class like in the word father so pronounce if the consonant has a sound pronounce the consonant first and then pronounce the vowel stroke or dot after that's all you have to do now you may say what if it's silent like the aleph you said that a letter is silent aleph okay well you don't pronounce that because there's, a, there's nothing to pronounce you just pronounce the vowel um you know that comes along with it okay first now this since this makes a sound the bit you pronounce but like you pronounce this you know this uh the the first part of this uh uh word but and then the a underneath it, it looks like a t doesn't it well you already know coming in that it could be an a or an o and this word is an a class okay it's called comets so ba it's as simple as that ba and then uh, the R, we already saw it in Hreshit, okay, remember? We saw it in Hreshit, right over here, okay? That's the first letter in that word, which means beginning there. And so, um, there's another R in the, the following word, okay? And, but there's also, so you pronounce that since that's, that has a sound, the R, okay? Okay, you pronounce that, and you pronounce it by putting your tongue on the roof of your, of, of the roof of your mouth. Okay, it's a very hard sound to do for people who don't speak Hebrew. Okay, so this is very difficult. It's just like um, I'm Spanish, and Hebrews may 
want to, you know, re you read and, and speak Spanish, but they can't do it like I can. And it's the other way around. I'm not a Hebrew, so I can't speak like they do exactly, you know. But what I'm here to do is give you the proof of the Bible, give you constructions and, and the words, and, and let them worry about, you know, perfect pronunciation. So you have the resh, okay, and um, that's the R. It looks, it looks like an opposite side R, like I said before. And so then um, you have the comets underneath it again. So that's an A class underneath that consonant. So ba, ra, okay. Now what's the aleph doing? Well, that's you don't pronounce that, okay. You don't pronounce uh, the aleph there, okay. So, ba, ra, okay, in the beginning, now incidentally, it doesn't say this in uh, the Hebrew side of things of uh, John chapter 1 verse 1, Hebrew New Testament, it doesn't say, okay, be reshid, ba, ra, okay, Elohim, ha, the ba, it doesn't say in the beginning God created the word, in Greek, it doesn't say this, and I put logos there or logos in the accusative case construction because he will be the object of God's creation. He'll be the object of the verb there in that best case scenario for the witnesses that doesn't even appear in the Bible. So, so far you have Behreshit Mara in the beginning created as the verb first. And then it goes on to say Elohim. Now, let's stay here. Elohim. Now, let's check this out. Elohim is spelled out, okay? And we have it over here. E-L-O-H-I-M. Elohim. Now, how do you spell that in Hebrew? Well, you spell it, okay? Aleph, Lamed, He, Yod, Final Mem. Wow. We have a final letter that goes toward, that only can go... Okay, only could be the last letter of a word, just like Greek. You got final sigma. That's that's that special S, if you if you will, can only be okay. Um, the last letter of a Greek word like logos or theos, anthropos, angelos, hados. You see. So this M is a very special M in Hebrew. So you got two styles of the of the of the Mem or M in Hebrew. You already saw it, okay? In um, in uh, let me see if you saw it there. Well, you didn't see it yet, though. You didn't see it yet, okay? You will see that, okay? Again, in the upcoming uh, word, okay, for heavens, okay? But the other um, mem, you see it in uh, Empanim, you'll see that in this chapter also face, uh, faces a person, persons. Incidentally, who will contend for the, f for the persons of God? Can be a translation found and recorded in the Hebrew text in Job chapter, um, I believe Job chapter 13 verse 8. But we could check that out in another study as we f look at the Trinity in the Bible. Okay. But let's get back to this. I'm under the word for God, God, okay? Now, the first letter in the word for God, Elohim, which is in the plural, by the way. This is not in the singular. It's not El. It's not El, you know, spelled out, Aleph, like this, and then Sede, okay? And then um, the two, lasa, the two uh, dots that look like a Braille C, right? And then... And then uh, Lamet. And that's not that construction here. You don't see that construction in the singular. Okay, you don't, you don't, you don't find it uh, here. This is the introduction of the Bible. So in order to introduce himself, okay, as a trinity, or at least having multiple persons, okay, in the Godhead, well, he put, meaning God, the living God of Yisrael, Okay, he put, he put the plural construction, Elohim, is the plural, found and recorded here, 
spelled out Aleph, which looks like an X, and right under the, the letter D in the word for God, looks like an X as actually a sign or a designation for a manuscript, Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus, you know, manuscript 01, the Greek uh, New Testament, okay, probably done around the uh, 4th century AD, the 300s, probably one of 50 Bibles that Constantine uh, commissioned, uh, that's just a deal. The other one probably being also in that pool of 50 uh, Vaticanus. Now, so that's an Aleph. It looks like an X, but it's not an X. It's a, it's a silent letter. There's another silent letter. It's really peculiar. It can make a sound. Um, the Ion also is, is, uh, is, but it's peculiar. It's a silent letter, but it can make a sound. But, you know, you don't know exactly what kind of sound it, it, it can make. Hi, my love. Oh, what's, what's this? Oh, okay. So, then after the Aleph, uh, below the Aleph, you have your Yuval. Okay, you have um, Hatef. Okay, that's, those are two dots. This is, uh, you know, uh, vertical dots. Okay, but you pronounce the upside down triangle set of dots, which is called Segol. That's the E class. E. So the first sound that this word makes is e eh, because the upper consonant is, is silent. Then you go to the the L, which goes over the higher Mendoza line. You remember I, t I spoke about Mendoza lines. The lower Mendoza line is what you write on, and then the upper Mendoza line is like the roof of what you're writing. You know, well this letter goes over the higher Mendoza line. Okay, so you see that. It's almost touching the, 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 the G in the word for God, okay? That's how big that letter is. That's an L in, in Hebrew. That's an L. Look at that dot besides the upper left-hand side of the Lamed, which is the L, okay? That's an O class. So when you see a dot over the letter, or like in this situation, not really over it, but a little bit besides the upper left hand kana, that's holam. That's holam. That's a that's an O class, like in the word for Moses. Okay, uh, Moshe. So so far you have over here. Okay, e lo, e lo. You see e lo. You have two syllables there. E lo. And then the last syllable is him. Elohim is the word for God in Hebrew. And so you have the hey here. You going outside that side, hon? Hello? Oh. So you have the hey here, which is an H, and I'm right, uh, I can't say right under the G because it's like, you know, toward the left now. So, I mean, it's not, it's like under the N over the G. Okay, so I'm, I'm right under that, you know. And it, it looks like, um, a letter that we saw earlier. Remember, we saw this letter earlier, okay? We saw, okay, all right, let me get it over here. Wait for a second. We saw the Tau, the T, the Hebrew T, one of them anyway. The other one is Tet, like I said before. That letter, and I'm right under the B in beginning, okay, that letter, Tau, looks like, okay, um, this letter, the letter He, okay? But what's the difference? Well, first of all, there's no foot on the left leg, right? That's gone. And then there's a little tiny opening on the left leg, on the upper left hand, uh, upper uh, uh, upper portion of the left leg in, in hay. So that's an H. When you see a letter that looks like this, okay, with a little tiny opening, that's a hay, that's an H. It actually means behold. I am Allah. It's found twice in the Tet of Grammaton. It means behold. So that's Elo. And then the little tiny dot underneath this letter He, which is an H, that little dot is an I. It's an I class, Hedek. So, so far you have Elo He, but that's not finished. Okay, so the little tiny dot underneath a Hebrew uh, consonant. That's an I class, okay? One tiny dot is an I class, okay? Just think of it like uh, dotting the I, okay? 
Now, where is where am I now? So that's H and then the I class. So you pronounce the H, the hey, first, and then the I class you pronounce after. Remember, you read Hebrew from uh, right to left. So let's go to the left of this uh, hey letter. Then you have the Yod, which means hand, by the way. Good morning, Godfrey. And then, uh, um, and don't forget to brush your teeth, Godfrey, okay? I'm speaking to my stuff, son. Okay? Okay, okay, sweetheart, all right. Okay. So then, uh, to the left of that, you have the Yod. But it's not acting like a Y, it's acting like a vowel, okay? So when you see a letter, like, like um, you see an I class, right? Uh, right before, you know, underneath a consonant before the, the, the yod, but just pronounce that syllable so far like E, okay, because it's, 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 it's a vowel, okay, so it's, it's blending together to make one sound, E, like in susim, horses, cherubim, those angels that, that, uh, that uh, were placed outside of the Garden of Eden, uh, keeping the way of the Tree of Life. Seraphim, the angels of fire, in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. Incidentally, the angels said, Kadosh, 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 holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty, right? Now, somebody may say to me, well, when it says earth, 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 does that mean a trinity? No, but who says that the earth is taught to be a trinity in the Bible? So when you, when you see that somebody's calling God holy, 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 why does, why does he say it? Three times. Why not once? Why not twice? Why not four or five times? Why not six or seven or eight or nine, ten or eleven times? Why three? The Trinity. And, and must, you know, only people who don't like the doctrine will say something like that. Well, 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 earth, 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 you know, it doesn't mean Trinity. But who says that the earth is a Trinity in the Bible? Okay, thank you, my love. So far. <laughs> I thought I might I take that back. There's nothing on the plate. <laughs> All right, so, so far you have Elohi, but there's an M here. In other words that make the sound, im, you know, the mem, is, the mem or the M is making this word plural here. Like I said before, susim, horses. Cherubim, those, those, uh, uh, those angel classes. Sedefim, the angels of fire. Panim, means faces or persons and persons or whatever the case may be. Okay. So this is in the plural. So you need the mem to, to make this in the plural here. So it's actually Elohim. Elohim. So that mem is making this word plural. So God doesn't tell you how many persons there are in the Trinity in Genesis right now. But if you keep on reading in the Bible, you shall see that he is three. One being, yet three persons. Blessed Trinity. Well, that is the construction here. But you see, um, if we go on, you see the plurality of uh, another word here. Okay, and that is, let's check this out. Let me see, let me see where this is here. Um, and that's the word for, this is the word for heavens. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? And uh, that's just the deal. Uh, let me just put it, actually, let me just put this a little bit more this way. Okay? And it says heavens here. Why? Well, this word is in the plural. Okay? You see over here, hash sha ma yim. Hash -ma -yim. You see the word the here, in, in, and that's the, that's the hey, that's the article. The hay is acting like an article here, right? Uh, yeah, I drank coffee, honey. I just drink juice. I just I have juice there. So the article it sounds like um, almost it sounds like the Greek article ha, but this is ha actually over here in in, in Hebrew. But in modern Hebrew, it'll be uh, ha. There is no distinction between the the two a classes. It's not a and a in in, in uh, modern uh, Hebrew. But look at the look at the look at the uh, dot. Inside the sheen, I'm right under the the e n, okay, in the word heavens, okay, basically under the e, and you see the the w looking letter, which is not a w in Hebrew, and it has a dot in the middle of the letter, 
that's telling you that that sheen, that SH, is to be doubled. That's a doubling doggish. Now, remember we saw in the word for, um, in the preposition here, be, that means in, that that dot in the belly of that letter made the letter hard, but. But the dot, that's a hardening doggish, though. But the letter, but the but the dot in the middle of this consonant is not making it hard. Okay, is doubling the consonant, is doubling it, is is turning that into two shs or two sheens. So what do you do? Okay, <laughs> well, you actually, okay, it's like I I like to put it like a math and with this I'll, I'll close. I like to um this like mathematics like when you when you when you uh when you um are adding something okay or let's say you're subtracting something you're subtracting something and so you're borrowing from another number okay and putting it to the other number okay but in that situation you're making it less you know the the, the number that you're borrowing from i understand that so it's not a complete 100 percent foolproof example you understand what i'm saying but what you're doing when you're doubling it, you're, you, you have your initial uh, syllable, ha, right? Ha, if you will. And then, so what you do, since you double the sh coming up, the sheen, well, one sh goes with the first syllable. So it's hash. Okay? And then you keep that sh with the second syllable, and then you have, okay, sha. Remember that the T-looking thingy is an A class, like in the word father. So, hash, sha. Okay? That's just the deal. Hash, sha, mayim. So, you have the, the article, ha, and the SH is double, so you have to put an SH with the first syllable, so hash. And then, the SH remains in the second syllable, and then you pronounce that f first, sh. And then the A class underneath it is like A like in father. So, okay, sha. Okay, so hash, sha. And then you have the mem, like in the word for Moses. Okay, that's a, that's a, you see the two M's here, by the way. You see the two M's. You see uh, the mem and final uh, mem in this Hebrew word. That means sevens. Okay, now in the Greek Septuagint, they didn't put it in the plural. It should have been tus uranos to match this. Okay, to match this, but the the Hebrew translators did not put that into Greek. Did not did not put put you know put it into the plural form and, uh, of the accusative. Okay, they just uh, tan uranon. They put it tan uranon, not tus uranos. Okay. Now we don't have the original uh, Greek Septuagint, so maybe they did that. But but the ones that we have, they 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 did not put that in the plural. It doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, after the um, the sha syllable, okay, I'm right under the, the E. Let's go to the A and the V, and you have the mem. It's a regular uh, M in Hebrew, if you will, okay? It looks like a half an M, so just, just remember it like that, and you'll be, you'll be fine. And then you have an A class underneath that, the same A class found in, uh, you know, under the article, okay? Pathach, pathach, okay? And that's an A class, like in the word for, for hat. Okay, so ma, ha, okay, hash, sha, ma, and then you have after that, to the left, right underneath the first E in the word for heavens, you have the yod there. Okay, you have the yod, the Y. And underneath it, not, not just in it, though, like almost like tucked in it that would be a doubling uh doggish if it's underneath it like right smack underneath it like right in the in the in the in the belly of the yod i mean right tucked right underneath it that would be a doubling doggish so be careful with that i'm talking about below the lower mendoza line or the line that you write okay and that's why you write all the your, your uh vowel strokes and dots and dashes okay below the mendoza line Below the Mendoza line, if you see an I like this, you're to pronounce it E or E. Okay, so uh, 
So over here we have hash sha ma yim. You have a Y, which is the Yoda means hand. Okay. And then you have the I class Hidek. Remember, we saw that already. Okay, the I class. Okay. It's in the word Elohim, that I class right underneath the Yod. This consonant is Yod and there's an I class underneath it, a little little simple dot. Just one dot. That's an I class. Okay. So if you see an I class underneath a consonant, that's an I. If you see a dot underneath a consonant, it's an I class. Hidek. Then, okay, um, the syllable is not complete. The mem, the final mem here, or the, or the um, one of the version, versions for uh, the M in Hebrew, you have mem and then final mem. Okay, so you have different consonants that, ca that can change its form um, because it's the last letter of the, of the, um, of the, of the word, okay? You have final mem, okay, and then um, that's make, that's uh, completing the syllable, okay, yim, hash sha mayim, okay, hash sha mayim, okay. That's just a deal. Now, um, that's making into pl the plural. See heavens there. Now, of course, you don't want to translate that gods because you're implying that there are many gods. Okay, in the beginning, the gods created. No, well, you don't want to imply that. Okay, just like the same Holy Spirit didn't want to imply that Jesus was a God in Luke's gospel, so he led Luke, okay, to put down a different Greek word uh, for transform, okay, which Matthew didn't use, okay, because if he used the same Greek word that Matthew used, since Luke was uh, um, writing to the Greeks, then the Greeks would have thought that Jesus became a god, a god, by the way. So you see how the Holy Spirit uh, okay, um, actually does not want to teach that Jesus is a god, and that's the proof that you can't translate that into a god, theos, which is in the predicate position, is a predicate adjective. Okay, The force is, is, is very strong there because uh, theos is written before Okay, um, in, the, in, the, in the first part of the sentence there, before the verb, okay, so the, there's a lot of the forces indicating that, that Logos is, is a truly God. So, the Trinity is in Genesis, and we just saw one there. But let's go on and see the other words very quickly, though, okay, very quickly. I just wanted to concentrate on that. So, the plurality okay within the godhead you see that automatically in the first verse now i if trinity was here okay this a baptize baptize them in the name of the trinity if he would have said that well i mean people who don't believe in the trinity would have said yeah but it doesn't mean three because there are not three persons there in the text of uh of uh of matthew chapter 28 verse 19 or whatever it is they would have been looking at a different angle to, to, to refute the Trinity. Yeah, Trinity is in the Bible, but it doesn't spell out it being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or different combinations. See 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4, 5, and 6, I mean, and, you know, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. So you, do, you see different combinations. It's not only the Father that's first. This is not the first, second, and third class system, okay? It, just, it doesn't teach that. All are equal to each other, okay? All of them are called Lord, and all, all of them are called God. See, um, see, um, you know, um, Praxis Apostolon, um, uh, chapter uh, 5, verses uh, 3 and 4, for the Holy Spirit being called uh, Theo there in verse 4, Okay? Linking that back to um, to uh, the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and as it mentions in chapter 12 of Matthew, whoever uh, blasphemes uh, the Father and the Son, it may be forgiven them, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. So give it a distinction. 
You see what I'm saying? But let's get into the words very quickly, and um, we'll mention the construction of these words in our upcoming study. So let's go to, um, let's stay here in the Hebrew. Okay, let's go to um, verse 26, the famous verse 26, but how is it in Hebrew? Well, we're going to look at the full uh, Hebrew and Greek constructions in our next study, but let me just whet your appetite here according to the Hebrew the text, okay? Praise God, he gets the glory, not me. Now let's check this out. Verse 26, and again, you know, I just want to give you the Hebrew word and uh, teach, you how to, teach you how to read it, you know? Now it says over here, and said, okay, why Omer, and said, okay, Elohim, okay, it says, the first Hebrew word that I want you to see is Naaseh. Oops, sorry about that guy. Naaseh, I don't know if uh, the recorder stopped, so. So let me just uh, stay with this. Um, I think I'm just going to stay with this word, and I'll, and I'll show you the other words uh, at another uh, session, in another session. Let's check this out. Let us make, now again, the Greek Septuagint says, boy, es, um, actually, boy, eso, men. The plurality in the word, okay, in the Greek is actually in the personal ending, the primary active ending, men. Okay, men. That's a subjunctive there, a heroitory her subjunctive there in the Greek Septuagint. I'm studying the Bible, Godfrey. Okay. It's not a command. It's not an imperative. Oh, oh, yes, Godfrey. What? Hurry up. Uh, huh? No, 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 no. I'm busy, Godfrey. Um, go outside and play for a little while, okay, Godfrey? Go outside and play or eat something, okay? Come on. You have to eat. Did you eat already? Did you eat? Okay, well, come back later, uh, sweetheart, because I'm, I'm doing something in the Bible now, okay? Okay? Load. Load. Huh? Load. What's load? Load, load. I don't know. I don't understand you. What are you saying? Low. Huh? Low. Low what? I don't know what you're talking about. Low. You what do you mean the 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 player? Uh, not now, Godfrey. Not now. I'm studying the Bible. That's gonna be heard. Come back later, okay? Come back later. I say come back later, okay? What I say? Okay. Come back later. And he wants to put on the player, and it's gonna collide with my study. I mean, I can't do that though. Close the door, Godfrey, huh? Okay, sweetheart. No, I mean, he wants to play Cinderella loud, and it's going to collide with my Bible study. Come on, can't have that. Cinderella, come on, of all things. I can see if it was War Room or something like that, you know, but Cinderella, I mean, come on, guys. We don't have time for that. We don't have time to play. And I mean, and let me just let me just use that before I get to this. Let us uh, make, which is in one word, is in capital, in, is in capital, capitalized in one word, one Hebrew word. You understand what I'm saying? Now I say. Before I get into Cinderella and the people at the tower and their pumpkins, you know, their 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 carriages being turned into pumpkins soon. I was finishing um, my thought on um, ep uh, epoyes uh, men. Okay, epoeso man, and that's a subjunctive. That's a that's a um, that's not a command. Okay, that's not a, that's not a, that's not an imperative. Okay, that's just a deal. So I mean, you see, the subjunctive construction and the omega. That's a that's a good clue. But we'll we'll look at that because somebody could say, well, I'm looking at the Greek Septuagint and I see the word uh, uh, make, but I don't see let us make. Well, poeso man, it's, it's, it's in the it's in the latter portion of the word. Okay? The man is making it in first person plural. Men. Amen et usi. You know what I'm saying? It's as simple as that. Now, let's get into the Cinderella. Uh, I'm going to use that. Well, yeah, the people in the tower, the, the tower is running out. It's almost 12 o'clock. I mean, you guys are going to turn back to Cinderella. You understand what I'm saying? One of these days, you're not going to have your briefcases. You're not going to have your skirts and ties and suits, you know, in hell. And so your, your, your magical dream tour, you know, Sergeant Pepper, Lonely Hearts, you understand what I'm saying, club? It's going to turn to dust, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. But your soul is not going to go to dust. Your body is going to go to dust. And your soul is going to go return to God who gave it. 
That's a position. You will be resurrected from the dead and your, your body will catch up to your spirit and you're going to be sent down if you don't believe that Jesus is Yahweh. Now, that, that's not to deny the Father. That's not to deny the Father at all. But we're here to glorify also Jesus that he has to be honored just as you honor the Father. Verse 23 of chapter 5 of John. If you don't, you're going straight to hell. That's all this is. Cinderella mumbo jumbo that you guys are teaching in the tower. And you are girls running around from door to door, gaining one proselyte. And when you gain them, you're going to make them a twice full of child of hell than yourselves. That's how Jesus spoke. Let's get to the Hebrew. Cinderella. A whole bunch of sisters in hell. Just going to make sure that you stay as Cinderella forever. You understand what I'm saying? Let us make is Naase. Let's check this out. Naase is spelled out N A. And then you have A because the, the iron, I mean, you know, iron doesn't make any sound, at least here, right? And then you have the W looking letter, which is an S this time. Okay? And then the E class underneath that, and then the hey, which is you don't pronounce that. You don't pronounce that. Okay, when you see a hey like that, okay, like in uh, uh Yahweh or Yahweh or whatever, however you want to pronounce that. Okay, knowing that the diacriticals probably came from Adonai. Okay, <laughs> is that what I'm saying? So the hey you don't pronounce. So I mean, I'm right under the word make. Okay, let us make. But somebody could say, but wait a minute. When I turn to um, Asa, and let's do that now because the Jehovah's Witnesses can do this. So let's let's let's, let's remind ourselves what to do. If the Jehovah's Witnesses they go to the the Strong's number of index and check out the definition for this Hebrew word, they're gonna have their they're gonna have their they're gonna have their um, um, lexicons. So they're going to go to 62.13, and they're going to see Asa, okay, spelled out. Let me see if I can see it more perfectly, because I am legally blind. Ayan with the Kamets, okay. Uh, Sheen with the Kamets. It's, it's, it's an S now. It's, a, it's still an S. So it's a, you can call it Sin or Sin. I mean, you know. And then hey, So Asa. But what does that what does that mean? Well, they're not going to see the construction in the in in the in the Hebrew Bible because they're probably not going to know how to read it. Now, probably some people do, but most will not. Even people, some people in the church, I can't read it. You know. Now it says over here definition. Okay, do make. Okay, so Angela, where's the we, where's the us business? Where's the, so that's what the, that's what that's what was given to me when um. Tony from Florida was speaking to me. He was a JW. Hopefully, uh, he is a JW. I mean, I don't know if he's a JW now, but he was at the time when he, when he was speaking to me. And he, we were looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 8. And I say, well, it says, that cannot be Logos, I told him, because, and it's an old-fashioned argument that you could use that Walter Martin brought out, so I don't get the credit for that. You know, it's kind of old. Because it says, she, 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 and her in the text, in the beginning of uh, Proverbs chapter 8, she cries, she calls, or whatever the case may be, her voice, or whatever. And then I said that, well, I don't know how to, I don't have a Hebrew Bible. At that time, I didn't have a Hebrew Bible. Um, that forced me to want to learn how to read Hebrew on my own, okay? Because of that incident, I bought a Hebrew Bible, okay? And I taught myself rigorously how to at least read the Hebrew. Okay? At least read it. Okay? And teach it a little bit here and there, you know. Not an expert in it, but to, to read it. And to, to pick up the Bible. And if you know the vocabulary word, rah, rah, to read it. Okay? You know what I'm saying? That's just it. That's what I wanted to do. Okay? Now, um, well, this means do and make. Where's that? Let us. What, what's the deal? Well, like I said, according to um, Proverbs chapter 8, okay, the textual form, meaning the biblical form itself, the word in the Bible, sometimes is not going to be according to the lexical form. And that's a, that's the a, a old, you know, uh, way of saying it. I mean, when you see Tan Theon in John 1 1b, when you trace Tan, you're not going to see Tan in the lexical, you're going to see Ha. 
you're going to see the nominative form of the article always. Okay, you understand what I mean? And when you trace down, you're not going to see the accusative uh, case construction unless they're talking about it, you know, for some reason or another, you know. You know what I mean? Just like Brown, Driver, and Briggs, I mean, they, they, they talk about all the forms. I mean, you know, you know, Echad and Echadim. I mean, you know, they, they'll talk about that. They talk about the different forms, you know. So, brilliantly, may I add. But when you trace it, the heading is not going to be in the case of the case construction for God, uh, Theon. It's going to be in the nominative Theos. And just like a verb, if, you, if, you, if you're looking at tetelestai, well, that's not going to be the lexical form tetelestai, with a reduplicating consonant and a connecting vowel and, and all that other stuff, right? You, you're not going to see the reduplicating consonant. In a, it's going to be in the present tense, okay? You know, like, I, I think it's a, what, teleo. I, I think it's something like that, you know, uh, uh, teleo, something like that. You're not going to see the, 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 the connecting vowel in the middle of the two Ts and stuff like that. It's going to be the present, the present form, in, indicative, present indicative form. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. So, I mean, you got to tell the witnesses that just because you're tracing the word, it's not going to be... Sometimes it's not going to be the same form found in the text. So you're going to have to learn how to read Hebrew within the Bible itself. You just can't trace, okay? You just can't trace a word and say, well, this is, doesn't, it doesn't, I don't see it meaning us, let us, because I, I'm tracing the word. What is the number over here? Uh, 60, uh, two, uh, 13. And I don't see let us uh, make. I just see make, as do. It's just like if you trace, okay, po, uh, you know, uh, po eo, okay, you understand what I mean? You're not gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna see in the lexicon, okay, po eso men. You're not gonna see that. You're not gonna see that form, okay, the subjunctive form in the lexicon. Again, unless they're talking about it, you understand what I mean? You're not gonna, you're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see all the forms in the lexicon. I mean, you're gonna have. It's, it's, you know, you can't, this, that's an impossibility. So they pick one form, okay, the nominative for the noun, uh, the, 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 the present uh, indicative for the verb, and that's what you're going to, and that's what, you're, tra that's what you're, you're tracing the word, but you're not tracing the construction for the most part, okay? Sometimes, I should say. So that's how you have to, you know, and so when you go back to, um, you know, Proverbs chapter uh, 8, but well, you're gonna see the word coal when you trace that word coal. Uh, it means to cry, uh, to, to you know. Uh, um, let me see what it means. I think it means like to. Um, oh, I don't want to do it now because you know I'll take you away from the study. But it means like to you know she cries or she calls or whatever the case may be. It's the word cola in the text, and the hay is is putting it into the feminine construction, like the word isha. Ish means man. Isha means woman because of the hay. You understand what I'm saying? So, call means to call or whatever the, the case may be. Or cries. But let's say call for now, right? And she calls is in the text because there's a hey there in the text along with the verb. So, that, that's just the deal. Now, over here, you understand what I'm saying? It means to this word, you know, just looking at the, the raw word, the raw material, asa. Well, that's not the same construction found in the text. The word is there, but that's not const the, the, the construction. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Well, what's the construction? Well, let's, let's look at it. Now, it says, let us make... So, let me just put the, poke the bear over here a little bit like that. I think that's more better, right? <coughs> let me just put the... Okay. Wait for a second. Uh, what, what what happened here? Okay. Um, wait. No, I said it's not. I said it just keeps on moving. I'm trying to keep it like there so I can see everything. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean. Oh, maybe. I, oh, it can, it can be moved, but it won't stay though. It won't stay. So just forget about it, guys, because it's not gonna stay. Okay. Now. Let us make is in the text. 
because it's na a se. Na a se. See the na there? Na a. Or actually, na a. Well, we want to be picky about it. Na a se. Na a se. You see? There's only a sa in the Hebrew lexicon. Okay, tagged again by 62, a 13. You see, and you, see, you see the lexical form down there. Okay. Asa. I in with the comments. Okay. Seen with the comments and then hey. Okay, so you have uh, here uh, what? A S A H. Okay. I in, it's a silent letter, right? I mean, you know. And then the comments, so that's A. Uh. Okay. And then you have the S letter. Why is it an S letter? Well, remember what I said about the sheen, okay? If the dot is toward the above the letter to the upper right-hand corner, it's an SH. But this time, the dot appears over the upper left-hand corner above the letter. That switches it from an SH to an S, okay? Like in the word basar, which means flesh, in the book of uh, Job, or the book of Job, chapter 19, around verse 25 or 26. The word for flesh there. Okay? I think the word for flesh there, or skin, okay, um, well, you have or and basar in Hebrew for those two words. And then um, you have the word where we get the word dermatology from. Okay? Well, not really ology, but just dermatology, that, the first part of that, 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 that phrase, that word. That term. Okay. Now, um, this is asa. Now, but what's the textual form? You see, you see the textual form is underneath the, the let us make. That's the Bible form. That's the biblical form. That's the Genesis 126 form, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the lexical form, the raw form, if you will, is found and recorded below. You see that there? Right over A-S-A-H, all, all the way to the bottom. That's the lexical form. So you have to tell the witnesses that you're going to see the let us make angle of it all in the text. The construction is different from the lexical form. And that's allowed because, I mean, these words come in different constructions. Okay. I just mentioned one. Echad is found and recorded in verse 24, chapter 2 of Genesis. Also in uh, the great Shema. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. Tagged by 259. Echad. But if you look at um, verse 44, chapter 27 of Genesis, okay, Stay and uh, go to your uh, uncle's house for a few days. That's Echadim. So it appears as Echadim there. For a few days until your uh, brother's uh, fury subsides. You see that it's different there. And the word for God is in a different form where he says, I am the God of, uh, the God of Abraham, the God of uh, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That is not Elohim over there. That's a different form. Okay? Well, anyway, guys. So, it's not a set for this uh, uh, let us make deal. Okay? N-A-A-S-E-H. Or noon, which it looks like an old-fashioned telephone. You know, like a payphone sort of a deal. Telephone. Okay, that's the N in Hebrew. Noon. Okay? What's that medicine, my love? No. Oh. So, um, noon... Um, that's noon. That's the N in Hebrew. It's actually noon in, in Greek. In modern Greek, it's called ni. That's an N there. And then with the A class, like in the word hat, so na. And then I in is a silent letter. It looks like a Y, doesn't it? But it's not a Y. It's a silent letter in uh, in uh, Hebrew. And then you have the um, the you know minus sign looking thing again. Hatef uh, patach actually. And uh, the patach is an A-class, like in the word hat, like, in, you know, uh, below the N. So, na, a, and then you have the S, a W-looking letter, which is never a W, okay, in Hebrew. Okay, that's an S there because of the position of the upper dot. And then you have an upside-down triangle. Stay, honey, I'm almost finished, my love. Upside-down triangle-looking uh, thing with three dots. That's segol. That's an E, like in the word get. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. 
Okay. Oh, wait for a second. Oh, the clock. Okay. And then uh, you got the time? No. Oh, no. Okay. Wait for a second. And then this word is capped off by a hey, which makes no sound at all. Okay. So, na a se. Okay. Na a se. Noon with the pathach. Ayan with the pathach. Uh, seen with the sego. And then hey. And that's the word right there tagged by. A different construction, but tagged by 6213. This is Angelo Quinones given Claudia. Because my, my wife has to look at the time. And time is growing short for the witnesses. This is Angelo Quinones always given glory, total glory to the God of Israel. Okay, who said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Okay, so um, I hope you're enjoying the Trinity and Genesis. Thank you. Uh, let me see where I can press the little tiny thingy. Okay, I can't find it, so I'm gonna have to go and do it myself. Okay, guys, here we go. Okay, thank you guys.